Welcome, I'm Dave Palmer, and this is the first ever video that I'm doing in the new year of 2021. It's January 1st, and as promised, we're going to get started with the SUMA once again. Last year was kind of like a trial run, and this year we're going to do it differently and with a few different twists. And one of the things that I want to do this year is begin by not just diving straight into the first part of the SUMA, but I want to kind of set the table, so to speak, so that we can understand what the SUMA is all about. And I'd like to, in this video, as you can see up here on the screen, start with the end. All right, when Thomas sat down to write the SUMA, what exactly was his purpose? What was his goal? What was he trying to get at? And I would say, and I think I'm right about this, is that he was trying to explain how we can come to know God uh, somewhat in this life, but most especially and perfectly in heaven itself. And he calls that beatitude. It's our perfect happiness. Or it's our perfect goodness, right? And so, you know, we all have experienced joy and happiness to some degree. And we know that we have this kind of fuzzy notion of exactly what heaven will be like, but we really don't know that much about it, okay? But Thomas goes into a lot of detail at the end of the Summa trying to explain what is it going to be like to be in heaven. So when you think of heaven, you might think of, you know, the pearly gates or the staircase up to somewhere. And we think of angels in heaven and the saints and, you know, but we don't really don't have a clear idea of what it is. We, we believe that, you know, we Jesus, if we're so blessed and graced to get into heaven, is going to embrace us. And so we picture, see pictures like this. But what is it? And how will it be different than here below when we're just experiencing something really great? I want to warn you. I don't want to scare you off because there's going to be a lot of videos that are a lot simpler than this during this year. This is complicated. And so I'm going to take a little bit of time and try to explain it. I can't guarantee I get this exactly right, and that's where you come in. Let's see if we can figure this out together, what Thomas is getting at. All right, so this is at the end of the Summa. Again, we're starting with the end, and he's explaining the beatific vision. What is it going to be like to be in glory with God? What's it going to be like? And he says, as from the natural form whereby a thing has being and matter, there results one thing simply. Okay, so here's an example. Here's a bird, a parrot. The parrot has matter, you know, the thing that it's made of, like the feathers and the beak and the claws and the skin and the, you know, the body. That's the matter. The form is that whereby what makes it what it is. You know, you might say, you know, parrotness or uh, it's being a parrot. That, that, that quality of it that makes it what it is is its form. Okay, and so that's what he's getting at. Uh, so from the form whereby the intellect understands and the intellect itself, there results one thing intelligibly. So this is where it gets complicated because Thomas is saying, like, take this lady, for example. She is looking at the birds, and so her intellect is able to, what Thomas says, uh, abstract the phantasm from the bird. Okay, there's some burden, some form. But what Thomas seems to be saying here is that and he, he says it very clearly that uh, the form whereby the intellect understands and the intellect itself are two different things. And there results one thing uh, intelligibly. Okay, so you have the form whereby the intellect understands and the intellect. And you got to understand that those are, those are two separate things. But they come together to form uh, one thing intelligibly. All right, now I, I know that's complicated, but we're trying to figure this out. Now, in natural things, a self-subsistent thing cannot be the form of any matter if that thing has matter as one of its parts, since it is impossible for matter to be the form of a thing. So take this tree. This tree has form, and this tree has matter. That means this tree cannot be the form of something because it has matter. So we know now that the form has to be something invisible, something that does not have a physical, sensible aspect to it. But it says, if this self-subsistent thing be a mere form, nothing hinders it from being the form of some matter and becoming that whereby the composite itself is as instanced in the soul. Okay, so the soul 
is the form, our intellectual soul <laughs> is the form of who we are. The matter is our body and our skin and our, you know, our hair and all that kind of stuff, right? Okay, now in the intellect, we must take the intellect itself in potentiality as matter. Now this is the complicated thing, is that the intellect it doesn't have a physical aspect to it, but Thomas is calling it matter. So now the intellect itself, which is not material, is matter, and then there's a form by which the intellect understands. Now that's what you got to try to get your head around, okay? And the intelligible species is, okay, uh, okay, it's in potentiality is matter, and the intelligible species is form, so that the intellect actually understanding will be the composite, as it were, resulting from both. So the intellect, as it's doing its thing, so to speak, is a composite of the intelligible form in the intellect. All right, so if you understand that part, then we're getting somewhere. Okay, so let's... Uh, so you got to understand that this man can come to know this snake, like we said before, as the man, the woman saw the bird, and she abstracts the phantasm. But that process of coming to know something has a form and it has an intellect. Okay, that's what I'm getting from this. All right, so here we go. Hence, if there be a self-subsistent thing that has nothing in itself besides that which is intelligible, such a thing can be itself the form whereby the intellect understands. Now, a thing is intelligible in respect of its actuality and not in its potentiality, in proof of which an intelligible form needs to be abstracted from matter and from all the properties of matter. Okay, so take angels, for example. We show angels to have bodies because we have to. That's just the way we come to know things is through the senses. But angels are pure spirit, right? Angels have intellect and will, but they also have potentiality. So... What Thomas is getting at is that what's the most actual thing? What, ha what has pure act and no uh, passivity, no potentiality? All right. It's God. Okay. So the divine essence. Therefore, since the divine essence is pure act, it will be possible for it to be the form whereby the intellect understands. And this will be the beatific vision. Okay. So I know this is complicated. I know this is difficult. But this is what we're getting at in the Summa, all right? I don't fully understand that, but I'm trying to get to understand it. Form, matter, intelligible form, intellect, our heaven, our beatitude is when God is going to unite himself to us as the intelligible form of our intellect. So we will be deified, right? We will be partakers of the divine nature. That is grace on steroids, right? Because God has actually united himself to us. And needless to say, the, the, the way in which we, come, we, we know and the way our, our capacity for knowledge will be so much greater. All right. Uh, let me know what you think. Did this make any sense to you? And, um, and if you, maybe you can explain it better than I did. Okay. Well, then comment, like, share. We'll have another video soon. Number two, in the fact, the next one I'm going to talk about just preparing yourself to study the Summa. And what are, what are just some preparation things that you should consider and that you should know if the Summa is going to make sense. All right. Thank you for joining me here in 2021. Many more to come. Please uh, comment, like, subscribe. And I look forward to a wonderful year of learning to mystic philosophy with you. God bless you.